Welcome to this video tutorial on how to create and use a raw light render element in V-Ray for Rhino. I'm going to be using this scene I've got set up here and currently in the render it looks like this and we've got a few materials on here, some water texture and some rock landscape on this as well. And what we're going to do is we're going to apply a new raw light render element to this render which we can save out in addition to this RGB color which we can then use to kind of increase the intensity of our lighting and our shadows in post-production when we're working this scene up in Photoshop. Now currently the render elements can be found under this RGB color icon and if we drop down we've got our kind of color, we've got our alpha and I've also got a material random color which we can see here which just gives a random color to each of the materials in the scene. Now to add the raw lighting to this list we just need to open up the V-Ray Asset Editor go to our render elements here and click on the create asset render elements and scroll down to the raw light there and apply it and it will just be added into these render elements in here. We don't need to change any of the parameters of this and once we've got that set we're then going to re-render our scene just by clicking the render button. Now this is finished rendering out we can then go back up to our RGB color here and here we can find the raw light channel. And there you can see it just saves the lighting in the scene. So we've got the kind of light from the sun on the surface of this and also on the rocks here and any shadow it's being cast there. So now we have all of our render elements. We can then save these out just by clicking on the save current channel. And if you click and hold the left mouse button, scroll down to save all image channels to separate files, we're then able to save these out as separate files here and I'm just going to save them as a JPEG and we'll just call them kind of render here and hit save. With those now saved you'll then find them in your folder like this and we'll have each of those render elements saved as a separate image file that we can then load into Photoshop. So we're now going to open up Photoshop and load all of these four files in into a scene simultaneously. To do that we're just going to go to File, Scripts and Load Files into Stack. From there we'll hit the Browse button, locate the files that we need, select all four of them and hit Open and then hit OK there. And that will load those four files into a Photoshop file simultaneously and it will stack them up so we can then see them layered up one on top of the other like so. To use the raw light to start to edit our image I'm just going to restructure my layers here. So we're going to just move the alpha down to the bottom and we're going to put all of these four layers into a folder called base to keep this quite tidy and neat as we start to apply these edits. Now what we can use the raw light to do is we can hold the alt key, click and drag this image file to create a copy of that layer and with that stacked on top of our base layer we can then start to change the blending mode of this particular raw light layer to either enhance the kind of lightness on the image or kind of enhance the darker areas. So if we set it to a color dodge essentially this will brighten up anywhere that's white in our raw light image and you can see it's quite intense at first. But if we lower that fill color down to a sort of 20, 25 value, and depending on how bright your scene is, this might this value might differ for you. But we can use it essentially to just brighten up the light areas of the image like so. You can also create another copy of the raw light and we can do the inverse. So instead of putting it on a color dodge, we can put it on a multiply and that will darken up any of the dark areas in the scene. One thing to note is when you put this on multiply, obviously everywhere that's black here will get darker and by default any fully reflective items like the water here and also the sky will be black in your raw light pass. So you might, when you set it to multiply, you might not want it to apply to the water or to the sky. That's where our material random colour can come in and if we copy this up to the top here, I can use the magic wand to select the sky in the black area, hold the shift key and select the water too, just making sure that contiguous box is ticked off so it selects all blue parts in the image 
and then with those areas selected we can apply a layer mask to this raw light. Now if we apply it on you'll see that it will just make it affect the water in the sky and we actually want the opposite of that. So if you hit Control i on your keyboard it will invert that layer mask and now the raw light is just applying to the rocks and the building and not the sky and the water. Then we can lower down the fill colour again and there we're sort of darkening up the shadows. So you can see that's sort of darkening the image and this one's brightening it as well. So we're using the raw light to really kind of pick up the intensity of the lighting and the shadows in the image. You can also use it specifically on key materials. So let's say we just want it on these rocks. Turning on the random colour again, I can use my magic wand to just select the rocks here. Then we can make a copy of our raw light again, just holding the Alt key to copy it up. Apply my layer mask to just those rocks and then perhaps we'll put this on an overlay here. Reduce that fill colour again. So here you can see it's just affecting the rocks now. So essentially we're just using that raw light pass to just increase and decrease the lighting. And if we go back to our original image, you can see the difference in that. Just by kind of overlaying those raw lighting layers, it suddenly becomes a lot more dynamic. We increase the contrast and it allows us to sort of fine tune the lighting in our scene after we've rendered it. So that was just a quick video tutorial on how to use the raw lighting pass that you can create in V-Ray for Rhino and then bring into Photoshop for editing your images after you've rendered them. I hope you found this video useful. If you want to watch any other videos on visualization or techniques in Rhino or Photoshop, please check out the videos on the channel.